Welcome back to our series, History from St. Paul's, coming to you from St. Paul's Church National Historic Site in Mount Vernon, New York. Today, in recognition of Black History Month, we present a video version of a new self-guided tour exploring the lives of some of the African-Americans buried at St. Paul's, with an emphasis on military service members. The tour starts at the rear of the cemetery at an American flag posted at an orange-brown gravestone for Thomas, which is shown here. Until the early 19th century, enslaved African-Americans represented about 15% of East Chester's population, including Thomas. His sandstone marker includes the only known reference on a Westchester County Cemetery monument to servant, a euphemism for slave. Walk towards the church about 10 yards from the Thomas stone and look for a small granite footstone marking the burial location of Rebecca Turner, who died in 1874 at age 93. Born into slavery in 1781, Rebecca achieved her freedom in 1810 and established with her husband, Benjamin Turner, a family homestead with a small farm boarding on the Hutchinson River, just east of the church property. Following Ben's death in the mid 1830s, Rebecca owned the land for 40 years, a rare status for a black woman in the 19th century. She established a laundry business to help sustain her family. Rebecca left the homestead to her daughter and granddaughters who maintained possession through the 1930s. A local public school was renamed the Rebecca Turner Elementary School in her honor in the 21st century. One of Rebecca's daughters, Emeline, and a granddaughter, Maria, are buried at the large marble stone to the left. Nearby gravestones also mark the burials of Nathaniel and Hannah Franklin, who lived in slavery till 1824 and were released just before the legal end of slavery in New York in 1827. They lived on a small farm in East Chester for several years. Buried nearby is Charlotte Pell, daughter of Nathaniel and Hannah Franklin, who died enslaved in 1823, but had married an enslaved man in nearby Pelham. Once you leave this area, you'll be walking over to the city side of the St. Paul Cemetery, along the path and then under a tree to the gravestone of George Carter, Company C, 10th USCT. Carter has both a faded marble stone and a new replacement granite footstone, which is shown here. He was born enslaved in Virginia in 1842, but escaped to freedom in the very early stages of the Civil War. In 1864, Carter enrolled in the 10th United States Colored Troops, USCT, one of the African American regiments created in the Union Army. Private Carter served through the remainder of the conflict, mostly in the Virginia theater. His regiment was among the first army units sent to Richmond after the Confederate capital fell in April 1865. After the war, Carter and his wife Rosa and their children moved north, first settling in Babylon, Long Island, and relocating to Mount Vernon in about 1880. He lived in the community for more than 20 years, well known and regarded, employed as a janitor and a gardener. Carter passed away at age 60 in 1902. Next, walk on a diagonal toward the front of the cemetery, captured in this image, about 30 yards to the grave of Samuel Nelson, who also has an original faded marble stone and a re replacement granite footstone located under a mulberry tree. He appeared in the community in the 1830s and married Sarah, daughter of Benjamin and Rebecca Turner, where Samuel resided for the next 30 years. Samuel was employed as a grave digger at St. Paul's and worked for many years for the Grigg family, which lived across the road from the church. His daughters, Maria and Sarah Nelson, maintained the family homestead into the 1930s. From there, walk over to the grave of James Polite, who was born enslaved in South Carolina and joined the 35th USCT in 1865 at the end of the Civil War. He served for two years in South Carolina, helping to police the early stages of Reconstruction. Following his honorable discharge, he and his wife Anna moved to the North and he lived for a time in Lower Manhattan, employed as a waiter at a restaurant. Polite moved to Mount Vernon in about 1890 and lived on Mount Vernon Avenue. His son, James Polite Jr., was active in the civil rights movement in the early 20th century. Walk directly towards the front of the cemetery, about 20 yards, to the grave of John Byrd, shown here, who was born in Petersburg, Virginia in 1845 and served in the Civil War with the 117th USCT. He enrolled at age 19 in 1865 
and served with his unit mostly in Texas, engaging in skirmishes with the final pockets of Confederate resistance. Private Byrd was almost certainly in the state at the time of the Juneteenth Declaration of June 19, 1865. Following an honorable discharge, he lived in Petersburg and was a member of the Colonel Stedman Post of the Grand Army of the Republic Veterans Organization, acquiring the nickname of Colonel, which he retained for the rest of his life. Byrd moved to Mount Vernon in 1902 and lived in the city for more than 30 years, passing away at age 89 at his daughter's house on South 6th Avenue. Walk towards the low stone wall shown in this image to the grave of Morris Link, a corporal in the famed 369th Infantry, the all-black Harlem Hellfighters. Corporal Link was killed in action July 15, 1918 at the Second Battle of the Marne in France during World War I. Married with no children, he and his wife Elizabeth were living in Mount Vernon at the time of his enlistment. The 369th endured considerable prejudice in recruitment, training, and especially in the war theater in France, where American military authorities refused to let them into combat commands, preferring to use them as service troops. Instead, the Hellfighters fought with the French army, compiling an admirable combat record. Corporal Link was awarded the Cross de Guerre of French Medal. Originally buried in a French military cemetery, Link's remains were returned to America in 1921, followed by internment with full military honors at St. Paul's. Please join us again next time for another edition of History from St. Paul's.